Good morning and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. This is how I start my day, um, most every day. And uh, I'm going to head over to the shop shortly, get our day started and see what's, uh, what's waiting for us. But uh, this is my view coming to work every day. And uh, it's just another day at the bay. All right, let's get to work and let's see what's, uh, what's going to be happening today. All right, thanks for watching. That's the sound you want to hear. Not the sound of an engine running, right? All right, let's go start our day. All right. Here we are, another day at work. Let's get our day started. This is like the calm before the storm. So uh, you don't see this very often, but this is pretty much before the day gets started. All right, we'll see what today holds for us. Let's, uh, we'll see what we can film later on while we're uh, through the day. Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to change a fan belt on a 2003 Toyota 4Runner with a 4.0. Uh, a couple of things we're going to need is not a lot of tools, but you're going to need a 14 millimeter wrench. And you're going to need a, uh, a ratchet with an extension and a 10 millimeter socket. Alright, first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this cover right here so we can gain access to the fan belt, which is down in here a little bit tight but let me take this cover we'll take this cover here off the vehicle and uh, I'll uh, I'll show you how it goes so let me just get you set up over here and I'll get started okay. Okay. So first thing we're going to take this cover off we'll just take out these two 10 millimeter screws right here and uh, you can take the cover. Okay, take a few nuts off, and you just take the cover and lift it up and pull it forward, and it comes out of these two little clips right here. So we just relocate that to the back right there for now. And, uh, Let me show you where the belt is located, and I'll show you how we're going to take it off. Sorry about the light. It's a little bit difficult. But uh, this is the belt down in here we're going to take off, and the way we're going to take it off is on this side, on the pass, on the driver's side of the vehicle, there's a tensioner, and that's the, uh, I'm going to point to it with a wrench, that's the tensioner right down inside there, right here. So uh, I'm going to get down in there with the wrench and we're going to remove the, uh, we just take the tensioner and pull it up and we can remove it. First thing you want to do is before you take it all apart, make sure you've got your schematic, how to put it, put it back together. If you don't have a schematic or you don't have access to a schematic, what I usually do is just draw it out on a piece of paper. You can draw it out as you, as you see the pulleys down on the bottom and then you just draw a little picture so you'll understand which way the belt goes and how it goes around it. So you just draw it out so you have a copy of it. But in this case we do have a copy so we're just going to take the belt right off. What we're going to do, I'm going to try to do this the best I can with the light. Sorry about it being such a lousy spot for you. But this is the tensioner down I don't know if you can see that down there. Let me just. This is the tensioner right here, and what you do is just put a uh, a wrench on it. I got to take this little light out of here. It gives you a little bit of light down in there. Okay, what we're going to do is you're going to put the wrench onto the pulley. And you take the pulley and you lift it up. And as you lift it, you'll see on the belt, 
see the belt the, it starts to move on that side and then what you do I'm going to put this down for one second here I'll show you real quick. I just pull that belt off the pulley like this and then you remove it from the car. It just comes right off each pulley and you pull it off. fairly simple to remove you just basically take it off putting it back on is a little bit tricky sometimes because you got to get everything back in where it belongs all right and once you got the belt off you just snake it around the fan and then you just rotate the fan Sorry about that, just a little difficult to do with only one hand. it up against the old belt to make sure it's the right belt because frequently the imposters give you the wrong belt so in this case the belt is the correct belt so uh, let me show you how to uh, to put it on now okay remember we uh, we made up our, uh, our schematic here so now what we're going to do is we're going to put the belt back on just the way we took it off. So uh, let me stick it in to where it belongs and uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to go right down onto this point right over here where the tensioner was and we're going to pry this tensioner up and we'll slide the belt onto the pulley here. So uh, let me get in there and I'll get the belt routed through there and I'll show you how to do it. I just want to show you what we did first is we put on this section of the belt over here first. So I'll show you real quick. See? Got the belt on exactly where it belongs down there underneath the tensioner. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come over onto this side here and we're going to uh, put the belt onto these pulleys here. And then we're going to get on over here with the wrench and we're going to pull up on the tensioner. So I'll show you how that goes. Okay. 
now that we've got um, now that we've got everything in place down here what we're going to do is we're going to pry up on that tensioner on the other side that I showed you that's the tensioner right there we're going to lift up on the tensioner and we're going to slide that belt on right over here so we're going to take our uh, wrench and we'll get down there and we'll, uh, we'll do it Let me just show you real quick what I did here. It's a little bit difficult to see with the light, but I'll get this light down here and I'll show you. All right, so we have the belt now on the grooves down here where it's supposed to be. We have it on the tensioner down in here as it's supposed to be around the idler pulley here. This this one here. And then we're going to make sure that the belt is on, sorry about it being so dark, on the lower crankshaft and we're going to make sure it's in the tensioner right here with the idler pulley the belt is on here correctly as it's supposed to and it's on the water pump as it's supposed to so uh, let's start it up and make sure all your tools and everything are clear and we'll go from there alright make sure all your tools are out of the way and then we're going to start it up I'm going to make sure it's okay running always check it to make sure that everything is on exactly as it's supposed to make sure your belt is on the grooves where it belongs here and that everything is where it belongs all right in this case everything looks fine so we're going to put our cover back on and then we'll be all set so let's do that and we'll get it out the door Everything's back together. Our clips are in the back the way they belong. Bolts are tight. Get our tools out of the way, and we're all done. All right, not too bad when you know what you're doing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the front brakes on a 2009 Hyundai Santa Fe. Fairly simple. Uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to disconnect this bolt right here, and then we're going to take the caliper and we're going to flip it up because the customer in this case does not want the rotors resurfaced so we're just going to do what's called a pad slap. We're going to put new pads on it. So uh, we're going to take out this bolt, flip the caliper up, and then we're going to push the pistons back in. Normally what I do with these is I get in here with a screwdriver and I put a screwdriver in here and then I just pry it this direction here to recess that the piston back into its bore. In this particular case, there's no room for a screwdriver to go, so we have to use the tool to, re to reposition the, uh, the pistons back where they belong. So uh, let me get started, and I'll, uh, I'll show you what to do step by step. Okay, obviously, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, disconnect this, uh, this bolt right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take it out all the way. And then we just take the caliper and turn the caliper up. A little better perspective on it. 
and we're going to need to push these two pistons here back in. And the way we're going to do that is we have a tool like this that we push these caliper uh, pistons back into where they belong. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the new brake pads. We're going to lay it in here. And then we're going to lay the other one in over here. Then we take these and we slide it right in between and you tighten it up. And what that does is it slowly pushes the pistons back into the bore. And you just turn it nice and easy. And then slowly you can see the piston starting to push back in. And you do that until the pistons are recessed all the way back into the bore. Just takes a minute or so and it pushes in fairly easy. While we're pushing that back in, you want to make sure that your, uh, that your slide pins on the caliper right here, make sure that they slide nice and freely because if not, then your brakes are going to stay applied and you're going to have a problem. So, And in this case here, both of them slide fairly easy. And then we'll finish pushing that piston back in. You can do it with the, um, I like this tool here, it seems to work the best for me. Some guys use a, a C-clamp, um, I don't really care for it, but this works the best because you can push two pistons back in at the same time. All right, and once you turn them in all the way, you can tell when you're in all the way because obviously it'll stop moving. Then you loosen it up and you uh, remove the tool. And then you uh, take your brake pads out. And then we're going to remove the, uh, the brake pads from the uh, off the road. And they usually come out pretty easy, but you can always just get a little pry with a screwdriver and it comes right out. Same thing on this side here. Sticks, hit it, it comes right out. Now, I want to mention to you, this piece here is a disc indicator. When this piece, when, <coughs> when this piece comes down to where it's even with the brake pad, that's when you get that squealing noise. So, uh, <coughs> all right, so that's the indicator. When that comes in contact with the rotor, that's what gives you the squealing noise. And we have to put the brake pads back in in the same position that you took them out. So we know that the outer pad did not have any sensor on it, so we can grab the outer pad. All right. the, the, the inner brake the inner brake pad has the indicator. <coughs> The inner brake pad has the indicator, and you want to make sure you get the brake pad that has the indicator in the right position. As you can see, this one is the, uh, the mirror image of it. It actually belongs on the other side. So let's grab the right one, and I'll show you how that. Right? Okay. See? Both of them have the sensor on top. So um, we're going to, uh, in this particular case, we're also going to change. We're going to change the hardware too. When you buy a, a premium brake pad, they usually come with the new, uh, the new um, mount the caliper hardware. <clears throat> you want to try to use it whenever you can, because this gets a little bit of rust inside here, and the brake pad is not going to slide as it's supposed to. So uh, we just took it off. Like this, we lift it up and out. Obviously, you put the new one back in the same way you just took out the other one. And you'll push it in until it is 
seated back where it belongs. Do the same thing on top. You just pry it down a little bit. Comes right out. You get your replacement and you put it back in the same way you took it out. Right? This is facing up, so we know that this has to face up as well. Take and you push it up inside here. And you'll feel it lock in. Where it's close to. Because they have these little these little tabs on the inside here. When you push it up, you'll feel it lock right up inside there. So again, it goes like this. You push it up in place, and then you push these this part here up, and you'll feel a lock in. All right, so now we have the pins in there. As we know, whenever you uh, replace brake pads, uh, most of the time they give you a, a little a little lube to put on here to make everything slide. Obviously, uh, you put it on the contact points that fit into that. All right, and you put this in here. The easiest way I find to do it is instead of pushing it in perfectly flat, just put it in a little bit of an angle and it just pushes right in there and you'll slide right in. Same thing on the back, on the back brake pad too. We're gonna to put some grease on the uh, back brake pad, a little bit right here and right there. And then we take the brake pad and you put it back in the way you took it out. Obviously, you know, make sure you watch how you take it out because it's only going one way. You don't wanna to try to put it in this way here because it's just not gonna happen, all right? Put it back in the way you took it out. You have a slight angle. And when you have a slight angle on it, you push it in and you'll feel it lock right into where it belongs. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take these slide pins and we're going to pull them out. And the reason we're going to do that is because we're going to lube them up a little bit too so that they slide the way they're supposed to without binding. Because if they bind, you're going to prematurely wear out the brakes. All right, so that's nice. And on the upper one, we didn't take that bolt out. So what we're going to do is we're just going to tear in the caliper and just turn it and have slight pressure pulling it out at the same time. And then you put some grease on this pin here. Then you put the caliper pin back in up on the top. Slide your caliper down nice and gently. You push in on this bottom slider. You take your 14 millimeter bolt. You screw it back in. You grab your 14 millimeter socket and you tighten it up. It doesn't have to go real tight, just snug. Now, if you're trying to turn this and the whole thing is turning and it does not get tight, then you need to get a wrench and you put a wrench on here and you hold it so that it doesn't rotate. You just put a, a socket, whichever size it is. I'm sorry, you put a wrench and you hold it like this and then you put your socket back on and you can tighten it up all the way. It doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes it does where you'll be trying to tighten this up and it just keeps on spinning. So you just hold it with a wrench and you tighten the bolt up. All right, so we have the top is greased, the bottom is greased, the bolt is tight. This one we never loosened up, so that's tight. The shims are in place, the, uh, the, uh, the hardware kit for the caliper, I mean for the uh, brake pads are in place, and uh, that's it. Caliper slides nice and freely as it's supposed to, and that's it. We're all done. Now we're going to go around the other side, and we're going to uh, do the exact same thing on the other side, and uh, that's it. We're all set. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Good luck, and if you need any uh, any assistance, uh, drop me a line. I'd be more than help you, more than happy to help you out. See you on the next one. Okay, today we have a uh, 2005 Buick LaCrosse with a 3.8 liter engine and we're going to be changing the oil and filter. I just want to show you where everything is located. Obviously we're going to lift the car up on the lift or we're going to put it uh, on some floor jacks or something like that. But uh, this is where the oil drain plug is. It's about dead center of the car. You can see the right side tire right there. This is the dead center of the, uh, the oil pan and this is the drain plug that we're going to be taking out. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just uh, raise this bucket up, break this loose, drain it out, and then we're going to change the filter. So uh, let me get started and I'll show you what to do. I 
like this particular car, the drain plug is a, uh, a 14 millimeter. Um, as you can see, you can't get in there with the ratchet. So what you want to do, get this nut out of here. We're going to drain the oil out of it. Um, as you can see, there's not much room inside here to get in here with, a, uh, with the socket. So we're going to use a wrench to take this out. Never use the open end section of a wrench to try to take out a nut. You may be able to get it out, but chances are you're going to wind up stripping the nut out. So never use the open end part of a wrench. Always use the box end of it. It fits on much better and it comes out a lot easier. You just put the wrench on and remember it's um, uh, counterclockwise to loosen it, clockwise to tighten it. So let's loosen it up and we're going to drain it. Fairly simple, just loosen the nut, raise up whatever you're going to be draining the oil into, whether it's a bucket or, uh, or a uh, whatever you've got. I always like to wear gloves because you don't really want to get the oil in your hands over a long period of time. Oil is no good, especially the uh, burnt oil is no good to have on the skin. Alright, so now we're just going to let that drain out, and uh, once it finishes draining, we're going to put the plug back in. So uh, we'll come back in a minute as soon as it finishes draining out. Okay, once your oil finishes draining out, you just take your oil drain plug, screw it back in. But the thing you want to keep in mind is that you're screwing the drain plug into an aluminum pan. So you don't want to over tighten it and you don't want to leave it too loose either. So what we're going to do is we're just going to tighten it till it's snug and then we're just going to go a little bit more. It's just touching right now and you just get it a little bit. There's a rubber, there's a rubber gasket on here so you don't have to really worry about making it too tight. You just don't want it coming out. That's it. Wipe all the oil, the excess oil off the, uh, the drain plug and then we're going to move over to the filter. Located. If you uh, turn the wheel to the right side, you can you can see pretty well where the filter is located. And it's right up in, in this area right here. So let's take that filter out and we'll replace it with a new one. Alright, you can just remember it's counterclockwise to remove it and clockwise to put it back on. You can just break it loose with your with your tool. Once you loosen it, raise your drain bucket up or make sure your bucket is positioned underneath it. And loosen the filter and let it drain a little bit. And once it finishes draining, then we're going to remove it. So while it's draining, I just want to show you one thing real quick. The new filter now, we're going to put a little bit of oil on the gasket here, just a little bit. That makes it slide a lot easier when you put it on up there. When you remove this filter, you have to make sure that the gasket from that filter comes off with the filter, because sometimes this gasket sticks up in there. So let me just show you what I mean. Again, wear your gloves. You don't want to get the stuff on your hands if you don't have to. In this case here, the gasket did come off with the filter, but sometimes this gasket gets stuck up by the housing, the, uh, the oil filter housing up there. So always make sure your gasket comes off. All right. Once it finishes draining out, you put your new filter on. And the new filter you're not going to tighten with a wrench. The filter you're just going to make it as tight as you can possibly make it by hand. Because if you use a wrench on it and make it too tight, you'll never get it off in the future. 
screw it on and uh, as tight as you can make it. Okay. Obviously you want to wipe off all that excess oil that dripped all over the place. Alright, now we're going to lower it down and we'll put the oil back into the car. Now let me lower the car down we'll come right back. Okay, now that we got the hood opened up, we're going to uh, put the oil in the engine where it belongs. Yeah, let me show you real quick what you want to do. Before you uh, put in the oil in any car, you always want to make sure you put the correct oil in. Most of the time it's written right up on, the, on this cap right here. It'll tell you what way oil goes in. In this case, it calls for 5W30. And if you're looking it up on the computer, I know it takes uh, 4.5 quarts of oil. So. Uh, Let's put the oil in it and uh, we'll start it up. After you get your, your oil into it, what you want to do is you want to uh, put your cap back on before you start the car up, we're going to start it, let it run for a minute, and we're going to check the level to make sure it's okay. I'm going to start up. After it runs for a couple of minutes, we'll just shut it off and let it sit for a minute, and then we're going to check the oil level to make sure it's up to what the, uh, the uh, full mark would be. And in this particular case, you can see, sorry, it's a little bit hard to see there, but you can see right here the, uh, the minimum and the maximum. So let's check and see where the oil level is, just to make sure that it's, uh, that it's full. Put the stick back into the, uh, in the engine, but we're going to make sure it's up to the full mark. And it is right to the full mark where it belongs. So in this case, we don't need to add any more. We're all set. All right, so make sure your dipstick is in, the cap is back on, and um, just look underneath the vehicle and make sure you have no leaks underneath there. And uh, that's it. We're all set. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Okay, here we have a uh, 2010 Honda Accord with a 2.4 liter engine and we're going to be changing the oil and filter. Now looking underneath the car, if you go underneath the front of the car here, you'll see in the back on the right side is where the, uh, the oil filter is located. That's your wheel on the right side. This side is practically dead center. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to unscrew this bolt right here, which is 17 millimeter. We're going to take that out and let the oil drain, and here is your oil filter. So uh, let me grab some tools and I get started. take that plug out and we're going to drain the oil. Obviously we're going to have a bucket in which to drain the oil into. Bucket up and take the drain plug out and let it drain out. While we let that drain, I'm just going to show you how we take the oil filter off. 
they make different tools to take the filter off. One of them is a cup like this that just goes onto the filter like that and you can remove it. The other one looks like this. It's spring loaded and you can grab it on the side of the filter and you can remove it. This one here is the one I like the best because it actually digs in to the filter pretty well and, and grips it nice. Alright, we'll let the filter drain out a little bit before we remove it. There's, uh, there's quite a bit of oil still up inside the engine. So we'll let it thoroughly drain out and uh, once it finishes draining, then we'll, we'll put the plug back in. But in the meantime, I wanted to show you when you uh, remove your filter, take it off, I'll show you. Okay, once you take the filter off, you have to make sure this O-ring on here, sometimes the O-ring sticks up in the top over here, and if that O-ring sticks up in there, when you screw your new filter on, you're going to have a double gasket up there, and you're going to wind up with a leak of oil. All right, so just make sure your old O-ring comes down, and you'll be fine. All right, when you take your new filter, you just put a little tiny bead of oil on the gasket so that, it's, so that it turns on fairly easy, and then you screw it up as, as tight as you can, by hand. You don't have to use a wrench on this one. Just screw it on as tight as you can by hand. And I'm as, as tight as you can. And that's it. Alright, so we just let the rest of the oil drain out. And once it stops draining, we'll put the plug back into it. Now that we're finished draining out, make sure your, your gasket is still on here. And one thing you have to remember with a lot of new cars today, you're putting the oil plug into an aluminum pan. You don't have to over tighten it and strip the pan out. So you just put it onto it and you go a little bit snug, but not too tight just to strip it out. All right? Obviously, you have a little bit of oil residue underneath here dry off with all that oil residue so you don't have a mess on the ground. And that's it. So now we're going to lower it down and we're going to put the oil in. This particular car calls for uh, 4.2 uh, quarts of oil. So let's lower it down and we're going to put the oil in. Okay, now we're underneath the hood. And you always want to make sure you put the correct oil into a car. Never just assume that it takes a uh, five 20, 530, whatever. Always look on the, uh, the oil cap itself, and if you're not sure, check your owner's manual. This one calls for SAE 5W20, which is what we're going to put back in there. And remember what I said, it takes uh, 4.2 quarts of oil, so we're going to put in about four and a quarter quarts. We're going to start it, let it run for a minute, and we're going to make sure it's, uh, it's full. So uh, let's put the oil in, and uh, We'll come right back. Okay. Now that we have the uh, 4.2 quarts of oil in there, we're going to put the cap back on the car. We're going to start it up and let it run for a couple of seconds, and then we're going to recheck it. Now, even though it tells you it takes 4.2 quarts of oil, it varies. So you always start it, let it run for a minute, shut it off, and then we recheck the oil level just to make sure that is where it belongs. And as you can see, it's right in between the two dots where it belongs, and it's at the full mark right now. So uh, the oil is full, and that's it. We're all set. Okay. Make sure that your cap is tight 
and your oil dipstick is pushed down all the way down into there, and that's it, you're all set. So uh, let me uh, just show you how to reset the maintenance reminder light at the same time. Then you come inside the car and you turn the key to the on position. Don't start the car, just turn it to the on position. Over here you're going to see your, uh, your trip uh, A, B and, and such. You press the button and release it, it goes to trip B. You press it and release it, it goes to oil life. Then you press it and you hold the button in and you continue to hold it until the oil life percentage starts to flash. You should do that in a couple of seconds. Once it starts to flash, you let go of the button and you press it back in and you hold it in again until it says 100%. Takes a couple of seconds, but that's it, 100%. So you, uh, you change the oil, you change the filter, you filled up the oil to the, to the capacity, and you reset your oil life index. All right, not too bad when you know what you're doing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. In this video, we're going to be replacing a battery on a um, 2003 Nissan Altima. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to remove this bracket right here, take these two screws out right here, 10 millimeters. Then we're also going to uh, remove the negative cable first, positive cable second, and we're going to lift the battery out. So uh, let me show you what to do, and uh, we'll see how it goes. What I always do, to, just to try to save the memory on the radio so we don't lose any presets on the radio, or any of the computer functions. What I usually do is inside the car itself, I connect into the power port. I connect in a double-sided connector so that I can actually power up the, uh, the car and keep power in it while the battery is disconnected. So we plug it into here, and we plug it into the, uh, to the power port in the car itself. And uh, we turn the key to the on position, and uh, then we'll disconnect the battery. So let me show you how it goes. First thing we do is remove the, uh, the hold down for the battery. Unscrew these, and we're just going to take it out of the way, and we'll reuse it uh, later on. Don't lose the bolts and the nuts. And we usually just take it, turn it to the side, and get it out of your way. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the. Uh, cables. Remember what I said, we're going to disconnect the negative cable first, positive cable second. And the reason we're going to do that is because if you're on the positive here and you touch anything by accident and ground this out, you'll have an explosion of the battery and you could damage it. So uh, just to play it safe, always disconnect the negative first and then when you put it back together, you put the negative on last. All right, so well, let me just turn the key to the on position to save that memory. disconnect the battery. Negative first. And then positive second. We want to take this out of the way for now. We're going to take this cover off right here. We're going to reuse this later. Up. 
positive is tight. We're going to reconnect our negative. Alright, and now we can uh, turn the call ignition back off. Alright, now that we have the, uh, the cables all tight, we're going to uh, connect on reposition. I'll put these back in, these hold downs that we took from the, uh, took off of the old uh, battery. Let me recap. We have the, uh, the hold downs reconnected. We have the negative and the positive both connected on and tight. And that's it. You're all set. Too hard when you know what you're doing. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Good luck. Okay, today we're going to be uh, replacing a starter on a 2002 Hyundai Accent with a, uh, a 1.6 liter engine. The starter is actually located in a pretty tight spot. It's down underneath, in the back, down underneath here. Well, you're probably saying, after looking underneath the hood, you're probably saying, what the heck am I going to get myself into? I can't even see the starter, let alone replace it. But once you look down inside here and you get some of this stuff out of the way, you'll have a lot more room to work in here. If you follow uh, what I do step by step, you're not going to have a problem. I'm sure it's going to go smooth for you. Um, all right, let's get started. So what we're going to do so we can gain access to it is we're going to remove a couple of components just so we can get in there. First thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the, uh, the air filter, the box and the hoses so we can, uh, so we can get down in there. So uh, let me grab some tools and I'm going to get started and we'll come right back. First thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the uh, the air filter uh, box so we can get access to the uh, to the uh, starter motor itself. But before we do anything, you've got to make sure you have your battery disconnected. Best uh, best cable to disconnect is going to be your negative. Um, basically, what you're going to do is just uh, loosen up whatever nut you have on the battery itself, and we're going to disconnect it. and just relocate it to the side so that way it doesn't come back up and uh, touch into it by accident while you're uh, while you're working on the car itself removing the starter so uh, we got to disconnect to the negative so now we're going to remove the uh, the air filter box These cars get older, everything gets extremely rusty, which is the case here. Now you've got to reuse this, so uh, be careful, don't break it. If you spray it up in any kind of penetrating oil, it's the best thing because at least it'll, uh, it won't snap if you reuse it. You don't have to take it all the way off, just loosen it up. Should be good enough to remove the, uh, the snorkel from the engine itself. Disconnect any any hoses that you see on here. Just keep constant pressure on them, and they usually pull off pull off pretty decent. with the air 
filter. Once you've got the hoses disconnected, you just pull these clips here. And then like that. Down in the back. And then we can just take this out of here. And we're gonna show you where the starter is down here. This is the starter down in the back, down underneath here. It's right over here. Now let me uh, move the rest of this box here just so we can gain a, a little bit extra room. And we'll get that out of there. And the way you take the rest of the box out is down here. You'll see a screw down there. It looks like about a 12 millimeter. And in the back, over here we see another 12 millimeter so we're going to take those out and then we're going to remove the rest of uh, the rest of the air filter box and I took out these two bolts up in the front right here too I mean you can if you want to leave it in there, you can. I always like to get everything out of the way so you have a little more room to work. And it opens up the access to that bolt there. So we're going to uh, remove that bolt and we'll get the... Uh, we'll get the airflow for uh, housing totally out of the way. Okay, just take this totally out of our way. And as you can see, with the uh, air filter box and everything out of the way, it gives you a lot more room to get in here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the, uh, the starter bolts in the back down in here. It looks like about a 14 millimeter bolt here and a 14 millimeter bolt right down in here also. We're going to remove these. We're also going to remove the speedometer cable right here so we can pull the starter out right through here. You can try to squeeze it through here, but if you remove the speedometer uh, cable itself, it gives you a little bit more room to pull the starter out. So uh, let me grab some, uh, some tools and uh, we'll come right back. Okay, so we're going to remove this speedometer cable right here. Also, so I can get in to get to this bolt down in the back right there, I'm going to actually remove this clip right here on the shifter cable just so I can get in there with a the ratchet to get that uh, that bolt out. So uh, let me uh, get in there and we'll get started. The, uh, the uh, speedometer cable actually comes out fairly easy. You just loosen it and then you can unscrew it by hand. And we're just gonna relocate it off to the side because obviously we're going to need to put it back in there. So we're just going to relocate that up and out of our way. And now I'm going to just take this clip out right here so I can remove that cable so I can get down to those bolts without a problem. Um, you can just put a pair of vice grips or whatever onto it and you just work it back and forth and up. And it comes right up and out. And now we can just move this cable out of our way. get in here with is a, a very long extension and uh, we'll crack these bolts loose. Okay, 
So this one we can get to with a uh, with a long extension and a uh, and a ratchet. The other one down there in the uh, in the back over here, you can't get in here with a ratchet. So usually you hang with a wrench and just break it loose. And once you break it loose, you can get in there with a ratchet and wrench. so we can pull the starter out. out. As you can see, they're both the same the same length, so it doesn't really matter which one goes back in where. And then we can just pull the starter. And then we can move it to the side so we can disconnect the electrical connectors on there. the connectors on the side of it. There's a little tab. There's a little tab on the side right here that you just press in and it slides right off the starter. Then you just take off this little cover right here, and you see that bolt right here? We unscrew that nut and we remove the starter. So, uh, let me get in there. It looks like about a 12 millimeter. Now, remember, we disconnected our battery, so it doesn't matter if our wrench touches anything because this is positive, but by the battery being disconnected, everything around here doesn't really matter. So, we just break this loose, and I'm going to put this camera down for one second so I can break it loose. Once you crack it loose, you can take it off by hand. All right, you remove your wire off of the starter and just relocate it to the side. And that's it, the starter is out. And now we'll, we'll grab our new one and we'll put it back in. All right, now we got a new starter, we're gonna put it back in the car. And we're gonna remember how we took it apart. Remember we took off the uh, positive lead off of the starter. So we're gonna uh, Tighten this up, but we're not going to actually tighten it to the point where we're going to break anything. Because you're only screwing it into a uh, plastic solenoid, and you don't want to snap that. So just snug it in there. Okay, remember to put your uh, your cover back over the top of it. All right, and we're going to reconnect our start wire. 
Eccola come scola. E then we'll worry about the store. Back down into the opening where we got it out of. Remember, we talked about the bolts, and the bolts are all the same length, so we don't have to worry about that. One thing you do want to do is, let me show you real quick. Remember, we took off our negative cable. It connects onto a ground right in here, so we're going to reconnect that on the bolt and put it through the starter. So let me get those caught, and I'll show you how it goes. Okay, once you got the bolts caught, then you can uh, you have to make sure you have both bolts caught and turned in by hand first before you screw anything back in there and make it tight. So we're just going to snug it up a little bit. Tighten it down all the way. I'm going to tighten up the second bolt. Remember, we used our ratcheting wrench to tighten that up, so we're going to do that. Tighten everything up all the way. I'm going to start by tightening up the top bolt. And we're going to make it fairly tight. And then we're going to go down to the bottom bolt and we're going to tighten that up. It was a 14 millimeter, so we're just going to get on with a 14 millimeter wrench. Show you 
I know it's a little bit hard to see down in here because of the uh, where it's situated, but now we got this bolt in here, that's tight. We have this bolt down here, that's also tight now. We put our negative cable back on underneath the bolt and tighten that up tight. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to reconnect the, um, the speedometer cable here and we're going to reattach the uh, shifter cable back onto here. And the way we're going to do that is just pretty much push this back into here like that and then we put our clip back inside there that we took out. I'm just going to get a hammer and tap that down a little bit. Okay, so now we have our cable back in where it belongs here. We're going to reattach the speedometer cable back in here. We're just going to snug it in by hand all the way down. And then we'll just tighten it just a little bit with the wrench. It doesn't have to be real tight. We're just going to snug it in there. Okay, okay. that's tight. Now we're going to um, reinstall our air filter box and then we'll reconnect our cable and we'll get it started. So you watch. Install the air intake onto the uh, to the front of the engine. I'm going to put this onto here. We 
connect the vacuum hose. And then we're going to tighten up this clamp here. It'll tighten up a lot easier than when it came off because you, when you spray any kind of penetrating oil, it'll, it'll make it a lot easier going back on. All right. We're going to reattach the air filter box and lock the clips in place. Those are the clips that you previously took off. You just snapped them back in place. In the back, there was four of them. We reconnected our vacuum hose. We tightened up the clamp for the uh, for the intake, and now we're going to reattach the uh, air intake here. We're going to put our two 10 millimeter bolts in here, and We're going to reconnect our negative cable back on and we're going to tighten that down. Okay, we start it up and we should be good. All right, sounds good. All right, so I know it looks a little bit overwhelming when you when you see where the starter is located down inside here. Uh, you can't even see it once you look at it, but once you take it apart piece by piece and you see um, each piece you remove gives you a little bit more ac accessibility to the starter. And um, that's it. You're all set. All right, not too bad when you know what you're doing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.